suffer, when Christians suffer terribly. In Iraq, in northern Iraq, the ISIS was forcing little boys, children, renounce Jesus. I will cut your head off. They said, no. They cut their heads off. They did. I just read it. Charisma magazine. Number one magazine in the United States. Of the Jews, five times received, I poor these tribes. That means beating, yeah? Save one, which means 49 stripes, yeah? Thrice was I beaten with, uh, uh, with rods. Amen? For, it means 39. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Can you, can you imagine beaten with rods? <laughs> can you imagine being stoned? I think during that time he died and had the vision of heaven. They prayed, gathered around him, they prayed for him. He came back to life. A night and a day I have been in the deep, which means, you know, just going through the, you know, Mediterranean Sea and, 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 uh, <coughs> and storms. In journeyings, often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils or troubles in the city, in the wilderness, in the sea, among false brethren, now, this looks like trouble after trouble after trouble after trouble. You can say, what kind of a Christian life is that? Do you have so much troubles? <laughs> Yet he knew God. Amen? You know, in, we in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger, in thirst, fasting often, cold, nakedness, beside those things that are without and that which comes upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Praise God. When he wrote to the Philippians, you know, when he said, rejoice in the Lord always, I say rejoice. He was in prison. He knew the secret how to keep it together. Yeah? The reason, the reason people lose their minds because they don't know how to tune to the Lord. Amen? How to keep it together. You better know. You cannot handle things, but God can. Praise the Lord. So I, wanna, I want you to see the six steps from Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 7, how to avoid a nervous breakdown. Amen? You can pull out more verses, but I'll just give you six. Amen? So six go with the number of men. We are men. Amen? Praise the Lord. So <clears throat> the, the first step, the first thing, the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> You're going through troubles and God says rejoice. Well, that's what he says because Philippians 4.4 4 says rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Everybody says rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say oh. now that's a tough one, yeah? <laughs> it's a tough one to praise God when nothing goes right. You should praise God when you when things don't go right because of because of, of you, your foolishness, you shall praise God when things don't go right and you didn't do anything. You shall praise God always. Now, God knows you will not pass this, graduate this class right away. Amen? You have to go a few times, many times around the mountain till you learn to praise God. Everybody says, always. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I remember, you know, just I just became a born again Christian and I just came to deliverance ministry, you know. And one day I came to the service, you know, and then I was really down. People are singing. I said, Well, I'm not going to sing because I don't feel like it. How many people said that before? So they don't open the mouth, they don't lift up their hands, they sit like mommies. Well, God is looking at you how you are sitting. And I don't think he's happy with it. He loves you, but he doesn't, he's not happy with it. Bible says, I command men everywhere to lift up their holy hands. Bible says, offer the sacrifice of praise, which means you don't feel like it, but you do it anyway. And when you do that, the grace of God comes down. You will never know that. The grace of God and the blessing of God, when you praise God, when you don't feel like it. When it seems like God is your number one enemy. <laughs> but he's not. Job said, though he tried me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yet I will, you know, just 
you know, just trust him. Amen? Praise God. So, that's to uh, rejoice all the time. And this is a commitment. Amen? We have to come to that place. It's not overnight. It takes space to, you know, praise God and shout for joy. You know, Paul and Silas did deliverance ministry, you know, just, and they were thrown into the deepest part of Roman prison, beaten first, you know. So bleeding all over the place, and all these bleeding wounds, they put those heavy chains. And about midnight, they started to have a worship session. Would you do that? We have a complaining session. You know, we have just complaining, cursing, swearing, pouting, you know. Our family is suffering because they are afraid because daddy is mad. I know those things because I've done it myself. But they are praising God. And they're having a really good time. The grace of God came down. The heaven was so pleased that it, you know, it came, you know, response from heaven. The, the earth shook <laughs> because the Holy Spirit came down. All the prison doors opened up. All the chains fell off. And the prisoners did not run away. Because the jailer, and the Romans were tough, yeah? the jailer wanted to kill himself, thinking everybody ran away. And, and Apostle Paul just shouted and said, don't do that, we all are here. A question, why they didn't run away when the doors were open and the chains fell off? Can anybody tell me? Before they were arrested in chains, in cells. Now they were arrested in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> because two guys decided to have a praise and worship session. And nothing was going right. Amen? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So number one, think how to avoid a nervous breakdown. <laughs> have a worship session. Amen? A sister came to me with her husband. You know, as, you know they gave me the story. They said, she said, well, he betrayed me with a woman, which means he committed adultery. And she said, well, I dragged myself to the basement, you know, and I fell on my knees and tried to worship the Lord. It was hard, but I continued. And suddenly, peace like a river flooded my heart. <laughs> you know, and uh, in one week, her unbelieving husband got saved. And both of them were sitting in front of me giving this testimony. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, number one thing to avoid, you know, just nervous breakdown. Why should you worry when you can worship the Lord? Amen? <laughs> it's not going to help you when you pout. How many people know that? Second, you should know the word of God, which says, when things don't go right, and we know but not every Christian, of course. <laughs> and we know, or we should know, that all things, everybody says, all things work together for good to them to the, that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. If you're suffering because of your stupidity, it's working for your good, because God wants to teach you something. If you're suffering because of your righteousness, the Bible says the spirit of glory is upon you. Whatever, it's working for good. Because your sufferings, will make you, your heart more tender and closer to those who are suffering. You'll be able to share with them your experience, how God comforted you, because you decided not to pout, but give glory to God. Oh, that's a powerful testimony, right? Praise the Lord. Look, to, look, look what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 to 18. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side. Everybody says on every side. Have you ever been in this predicament? Ever? Yet not distressed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Prosecuted, but not forsaken. God will never forsake you. Cast down, but not destroyed. God will never allow you. You might lose your life, but you're not destroyed because you're going straight to the land of glory. Amen? Which is better. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. So the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. What does it mean? God sometimes allows things to happen to us. That, you know, just the life of Jesus may be manifested because your life, the old man is so strong, God has to just 
crush the old man. <laughs> because the old man ought to be on the cross, yeah? But we don't crucify the old man. We walk in the last of the old man. So God has to, you know, just allow circumstances that you'll be screaming, saying, God, I feel like I'm dying. Did anybody go through that? That's what I did. I said, I think I'm dying. Well, you know what God says? Good. <laughs> yeah, I cannot wait till you're dead all the way. God talks about the old man, not the new man. Amen? That's what happened to Heidi Baker, whom God used in Mozambique to set up so many churches. You know, she was, you know, um, she was, you know, struck by the Holy Spirit. For seven days, she was like paralyzed. You know, and she was saying, Lord, I'm dying. And that's what God said to her. Well, good. But after God finished with her, <laughs> she was a different person. Amen? Before that experience in Mozambique, they had about three churches they set up, you know, and uh, two of them were almost dying. After that, when she went there, 6,000 churches, home churches, all kinds of churches, 6,000. The river Limpopo, you know, just flooded the whole country. And, and, you know, and they were going everywhere and there were little groups, churches, everywhere. You can read the book written by Heidi Baker. Praise the Lord. Always bearing in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So if you're going through bad things, you know, and you didn't do anything wrong, maybe God is just producing this death in you so the life of Jesus can shine. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. When the life of Jesus manifested in you, then it's a blessing to the whole mankind. It's a, you are a blessing to everybody around you. Amen? Because you walk in the new man, not the old me. So then death works in us by the circumstances God allows, but life in you. Because if death works in you, then the life in you will be alive to others. We have in the same spirit of peace, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that the abounding grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we paint not. How many people felt like painting many times? <laughs> painting. But though our outward men perish, that's the old man, yeah? Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, everybody says light affliction. This is nothing which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. If you just go through it with great patience, it will work out, you know, just glory. Amen? Why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. When you go through things, you have to look at God whom you don't see. Amen? For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So praise the Lord. So number one thing, how to avoid a nervous breakdown? Rejoice in the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Anybody can complain and criticize and, and you know, and go into self-pity. Amen? But not many will rejoice. Amen? And will take the faith, hope, and love. Praise God. So choose today to break this bondage of, you know, you know, pouting when bad things are happening. Amen? Quit complaining and start rejoicing. Number two, how to avoid a nervous breakdown. Deal gently with people. Usually the problems, most of the problems has to do with people, yeah? I'm fired, I'm hired, you know, just I'm whatever, yeah? Bible says, therefore my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for no, that's not this one, yeah. <clears throat> okay, give me a moment, and we'll fix it up, amen? Praise God, here it is. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. The word moderation is also translated gentleness, amen? Number one was rejoice. Number two, be what? Be gentle, since many problems has to do with people. 
I said soft answer will turn away wrath. When we respond in the flesh, we give a witness for the flesh. Amen? Hallelujah. And people will be confused. They say, well, he behaved like a Christian, you know, in the church, but you should have seen him outside the church. <laughs> How he acts, you know, he's rude. You know, he's like a dog, barking, biting. So you confuse people, those who are weak, <laughs> those who maybe are about to get saved. So they saw you how you're acting outside the church. Do not give in into temper tantrums. <laughs> Do not release your frustration on your family. Amen? Do not kick the doors, <laughs> you know, or punch holes in the wall. Praise the Lord. So, gentlemen. Amen. <laughs> Number three, <laughs> praise God. Number three, talking about how to avoid nervous breakdown. Live in awareness of Lord's presence. Because when you are in the spirit, you don't act in the flesh. Amen. That's why the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation, gentleness be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. He's coming soon, and the Lord is at hand means also He's always with you. Amen? But you're blocking yourself out from Him by the way you act. When you actually need Him very well. You, you need Him very, very much. Amen? Praise God. The Lord is here and now, and He is coming. He's here to help. The Bible says the Lord is the very, very help. In the times of troubles. The Bible says, call upon the Lord in the times of troubles. I will deliver you and you will what? Glorify me. Praise the Lord. So he is here. So you must live in the awareness of God's presence. All the time. We live as if he was somewhere there in heaven. And since it's cloudy, he cannot see us. Oh, he sees you. <laughs> How far is God? <laughs> Bible says God is before us. God is behind us. That's what the Bible says. God is above. God is beneath. God is around, on the left, on your left hand, on your right hand. God is around you as hills around Jerusalem. And the God is within you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You cannot go wrong unless you want to go wrong. How far is God? <laughs> when he's in you, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen? So be, when times come like that, bad, bad times, rejoice in the Lord always. Be gentle. You know, don't pout. Don't beat up your boss because he fired you. Just thank God for the better job which is coming. Thank you, God, I was laid off. I'm going to get a better job. If he doesn't want you to get laid off, don't worry. There's a brother here, you know, his boss, owned, his foreman didn't like him. He was in Montreal, you know, the boss didn't like him. He wanted to fire him. You know what happened? The boss, the foreman was fired. So if you lose your job, say, oh, thank you, God. We're going to a new field, new mission field. <laughs> because what is your job? Just to, so, you can, so you can have, you know, provisions, amen? But it's more than that. It's your ministry. What kind of your ministry? It's just up to you. Yeah. You say, well, I'm a Christian. Well, you didn't look like that an hour ago when you were swearing and cursing because you hit the fingernail instead of the nail, yeah? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So be all the time aware of God's presence because he's in you. And when things go wrong, be like David. Bible says... First Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, David and a bunch of his warriors left the town of Ziglag, leaving behind their wives and children and servants, went to fight. When they came back, the town was burned down. The wives were gone, the children were gone. They didn't even know which direction they went. And Bible says, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Who? His own men. 
because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his daughter and for his, uh, for his sons and for his daughters. The Bible says they were crying so much they had no tears to cry. This man seasoned in war, seasoned in killings. But Bible says, but David, everybody said, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. How, you, how do you do that? Well, you, you, you practice the presence of God. He used to play, yeah? He knew how to pray. He knew how to play. He knew how to pray. And that's what he did. He encouraged himself in the Lord. When you praise God, like Paul and Silas in the prison, you know, the Bible says, God abides, comes down <laughs> when his people are singing to him. Of course, he wants to hear it. He wants to be very close. You know, so David encouraged himself in the Lord, and then he prayed, because the Bible says he inquired, means he prayed, shall I pursue the enemy? Will I recover what they have stolen? God said, Pursue, pursue, for surely you will recover, you will overtake them and you will recover all. Not only he recovered all, he got the spoil on top of it. You can pursue the enemy and recover what he has stolen from you. Amen? But it has to be decisive, it has to be aggressive, it cannot be the wimpy, flappy, you know, kind of a whatever. Amen? Christianity, amen? Bible says that heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Everybody says by force. Praise God. You know, you have the armor of God. Your weapons are superior to the weapons of the enemy. You have the authority. Look at 19. The devil is scared of you. But the truth many times is Christians are scared of the devil. Oh, I was scared of the devil. I used to sleep most of my life with the lights on, radio on. I had to watch the doors. <laughs> you, you would say, you would ask me why. Oh, I don't know. I was fearing this, you know, the devil. Now I, praise God, I'm doing the opposite. Amen? I'm destroying the works of the devil. So praise the Lord. So number one was, you know, just uh, rejoice in the Lord. Be gentle in those situations, you know. Number three, you know, just um, live in the awareness of the Lord's presence. He didn't run away because of your big troubles. <laughs> He's waiting till you call upon him, amen? Praise God. Number four. Let's go number four. Praise God. Number four. Don't worry. Everybody says, don't worry. <laughs> Just don't repeat after, you know, just, what's this, what's this guy who, uh, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> because he had, you know, just say, you know, marijuana, you know, just, you know, cigarette long like this. Bob Marley, yeah? You know, well, we're not talking about that, amen? <laughs> but it says, in... Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation, gentleness be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand, the presence. Be careful for nothing. Careful for nothing means don't worry, be anxious for nothing. Don't even allow things to move you. You know, you know why pout, why worry when you can pray, right? But we are so foolish, we just have to... You know, pout, kick, you know, just and cry and as if it would help us. Bible would tell you if it if it would help you, you know, it would have been written in the Bible, yeah? And it's not written. But in everything by prayer and supplication with the thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, which means pray. Now God knows what's going on. But the thing is released, God's help is released when you pray. Amen? You have not because what? You ask now. Does God know what you need? Yes, but you still don't get it till you ask, till you pray. You need to pray. Praise the Lord. Be, don't worry about anything. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Amen? But in everything, everybody says in everything, whatever the problem is, say, God, here it is. <laughs> I don't know what to do. 
I'm beside myself, and I admit a lot, I'm going to kick the wall, you know, beat up somebody, but I, don't, I know you don't want me, so that's the way I prayed. Many times. I said, God, I'm ready to sin. But I gave God a chance. Call upon the Lord. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall deliver you. You shall glorify me, which means 100%. There's no temptation came upon a man, which is common to men, that God will not give a way out of it. Praise the Lord. Be careful for nothing, which means don't be anxious. Amen? Because worry is fear. Worry is a lack of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You start to build up your faith now, people, before things get worse. The way you do it, read the Bible. Read the Bible. Don't worry if you understand everything. The word of God has its way to find a place in your life, in your heart. A man strengthens you, cleanses you, builds you up, and then you start to understand suddenly things you didn't even ask for. Because the word of God is living when you read it. You, you're not reading a newspaper. And remember, most things we worry many times never happen. <laughs> That's called paranoia, which means unfounded fears. Amen? Hallelujah. And other times, the things you worry about will happen because Job said, you know, the thing that was afraid came upon me. Fear is a door opener. Don't give in to fear. Praise the Lord. Okay, number five, how to avoid a nervous breakdown. Okay, share your heart with God. Amen? First, you don't worry. Second, you, you pray. Amen? Bible says pray. Amen? Which means... <clears throat> okay. Oh, hallelujah. But, you know, the previous point was be careful for nothing, which don't worry. And this point is, means pray. Amen? But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. I think I already kind of uh, talked about it already. But anyway, pray, pray, pray. Amen? Because God does, uh, you know, does everything through prayer and nothing outside of prayer. Amen? If he wants to do something, he will touch somebody to pray. I was says, Elijah was a man like us, and we all want to be like Elijah, right? But he was like us. But he prayed. What distinguished him from others? He prayed. It, it didn't rain. He prayed, and it did rain. And if we pray, rain will come too, into our lives. Praise the Lord. Number six, the last point. Praise God. How to avoid a nervous breakdown. Receive peace or pray till the peace comes. You will feel it. Then you know that the worry is released because sometimes we are, you know, say, okay, okay, God have it, and then right away you take it back and worry again. You know, <laughs> don't be like that. Amen? Praise the Lord. And the peace, so when you pray, when you give it to God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding. You cannot even explain this type of a peace. How can you be so peaceful when everything is falling apart? Because it's not my peace. <laughs> and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So how to avoid nervous breakdown? You know, just you summing up. Um, you know, um, all things, you know, praise the Lord. Well, Number one, rejoice in the Lord. Amen? Number two, deal gently with this situation because usually deal gently with the people who fired you and deal gently with your family when you come back with your problems. Amen? Whoever. Number three, live in the awareness of the Lord's presence, which means also practice God's presence. Number four, don't worry. Number five, share your heart with God because the moment you release it to Him, Peace comes. Receive peace right away. Don't only pray to him, but say, Lord, I receive your peace into my heart and into my mind. The Bible says you will keep him in perfect peace. Everybody says perfect peace. Whose mind stays on thee. So you stay in that prayer. You don't have to even talk. Say, Lord, I'm staying in your presence till I feel the peace <laughs> of God. But also receive the peace and wait till you feel the peace. Amen? Everybody says, Amen. 
Praise God. Ah, you know, in conclusion, remember that Almighty God will always take your problems, always come to you, will always sustain you. Amen? You can rejoice in tough times. Amen? But of course, that's the school of growth to come to that place. Praise the Lord. Now let us pray. Amen? Now you have to pray. Praise God. Ah, hallelujah. And Jesus said, do not your heart be troubled. Praise God. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you, to the throne of grace and mercy, to obtain mercy. Almighty God, in the light of your word, I can see. I lost my temper. <laughs> I t lost my faith in you. I went contrary, even cynic against you, when bad things happened to me. Forgive me, Lord. Thank you for your word, which tells me to rejoice always in the Lord. <laughs> to Lord, I pray you help me to rejoice in you. You help me to deal gently with people. To practice your presence. To not worry, but in prayer make things known unto you and believe you're already at work. And Lord, give me grace to receive the peace. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So for those who just came, the title of the message was How to Avoid a Nervous Breakdown. Amen? Hallelujah. Now we'll sing a song. Amen. There's a song. You can help me. He is our peace who has broken down every wall. He is our peace. He is our peace. He is our peace. Who has broken down every wall? He is our peace. He is our peace. Cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. He is our peace. He is our peace. Cast all your cares on him. For he cares for you, he is our peace, he is our peace. Everybody says, Lord Jesus, I cast upon you all the burdens, all the bad things happen to me, all the worries, everything, and I receive. Right now, your peace into my heart and to my mind. Help me not to take back <laughs> my burdens and worries. And I believe right now you are at work taking care of it all. Now I give you a moment. Just cast upon the Lord everything right now. Has upon the Lord everything. Whisper to him, you know what it is. Could be your job, could be your husband, could be your child, could be you yourself, your own worst enemy. Whatever it is, just give it to him now. If you don't have peace in your heart, give it to him. <laughs>